What's going on, people? Welcome back to Saeed TV. Last time I was at the SoFi Stadium in LA. Now we're in New York, man. We're traveling. You know what I'm saying? Let me see some energy, man. Let's go, let's go. Yo, yo, we are sad, we are sad, but we are sad. Yes, yes, people, welcome Come. to Saeed TV. There you go, there you go, man. Listen, right there. We're at the Legends Bar. We're at the Legends Bar in New York. You know what I'm saying? We're here. Like I said, man, we're trying to see what's going down. And listen, I've been trying to avoid the Man United talk. But yeah, Greg's told me, yo, listen, we need to speak. It's time. It's time. We've got some big fixtures coming up, big games coming up, and it comes at Southampton. But I want to ask the question, can Ten Hag turn it around? The media speculating that Ten Hag, time is looking up. You know what I mean? Tactics are not going well. It ain't easy. I'm going to start off with you, my man Grizz. Griggs, should I say? Griggs, can he turn it around? Um, it's clip. It's pretty much easy to say it's clipped. Uh, I think, obviously, the Liverpool game, the way he was responding to journalists. When a coach started talking about XG, this. I think yesterday he said there was, like, Chris Wheeler came out with something about him having a plan, him demanding players to have more possession. It's been two and a half years. We ha we don't dominate possession. The signings were good in a sense, Ugarte, all that kind of stuff. But he he said Ugarte is not ready. I saw Ugarte play about 180 minutes in, uh, Bro. for international qualifiers. So he's clearly fit. So I, I just don't think so. I think the guy, he, he'll be, he won't be able to handle the pressure from the media. You already see journalists pressing him, all that kind of stuff. Once a manager loses their head, especially at a big club like Man United, it's very hard to kind of get the trust back. And also, don't forget, Ineos hired Ruben Nisseroy. That was a fail-safe plan as much as people don't want to admit it. So I looked at our fixtures the end of September. I saw Porto away. I saw Spurs at home. I saw Villa away before the next international break. It could get tricky. So... If we don't win on Saturday, the noise, people are going to keep chirping, chirping, chirping. So, yeah. It's, it's one of them, man. Like I said, man, it's looking real peak. Ziggy, you talked about, you know what, just, you know what I mean, let the pain, let him suffer. You're saying let him suffer. And listen, listen, the, let me get the mic, bro. Yeah. Oh, you want the mic? Yeah. Okay. The only thing Tenha can turn around at this point is his gender. That's it. Oh. He can be Miss. You know what? Not even Miss. He's too old. Madam Ten Hagensburg at this point, because he ain't turning around like this. He can do 360 on his gender, but the Man United thing, we can forget about it, like I did. I'm, you know, I'm already checked out at this point. Mm. I want to watch these people who are supporting Ten Hag burn, tears. I'm kicking out my But what about seat. you, though? What about you? You want to see United. You're wearing the United shirt now. You're a United fan. You want to suffer. Because of Ten Hag. Listen, listen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for what the long game, bro. We can. Oh, so we you say short term pain, long, long term, term gain. gain. You okay, got it. Okay. I, I can bear two, three losses, bro. It's all good. But to be fair, the losses we're gonna get. I'm gonna see these fans burn in tears. So. Why is it personal for you? Why is it personal for you? Uh, I don't know, cause you know, evidence was over there for the last three years, right? Mm. My guy played Christian Eriksen in number nine, false nine. That's and true, he, that's true. And he fucking signed Mason Mount. Did we all forget that? Yeah. Mason fucking Mount. <laughs> uh, what, what, what evidence do we need? We actually been watching ourselves, believe, believing this guy is going to do anything else in this club. Mm. He's not going to do nothing, bro. We all, you know, at this point, I, I remember a tweet uh, from three years ago when Gary Neville, he put it a tweet out, who do you want, Pochettino or Ten High? At mm. this point... I, I'd rather have Pochettino, bro. Like, wow. Yeah. Pochettino hype. But you don't see what Chelsea, what happened? Nah, but Saeed, think about yourself, yeah? At least, no, Chelsea were 4-4 with City. The mm. kind of game they were playing. The you kind said of they play, play better football. 100%, the kind of play we had. What is Ten Hag doing, bro? Like, nothing. We have a ball-playing goalkeeper who doesn't play ball. He's fucking kicking on every single time, right? And we got Lisandro Martinez, who's better on his feet. He was supposed to be a ball-playing defender. He doesn't do that. And then we got road runners in our midfield. Fucking Bruno Fernandes, Mason Mount. Mm. And we're, we're letting Kobe Miner die over there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, how much evidence do we actually need, brother? Mm. Like, you tell me. That's mm. why I'm fucking checked out. You know? You, you got me into this. You know, I'm fucking all emotional. You got me into it. I was already me, checked out. You know, you buy, you, he's buying me fucking four beers now just because he put me into it. Let me, well, let me, let me try that. Uh, nah, let me go sip my drink, bro. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> let him get his drink. Let me, um, obviously, we spoke to my man here. You said you're a bit more optimistic about Ten Hag. Talk to me. Look, my brand has always been relentless positivity, mm. relentless optimism. 
it's a little hard these days to be relentlessly positive. Obviously, things are a little peak. But if you look at the last two years, all right, and this is Ten Hag's third year. He's only had two years. What do we have from the last two years? We have a Carabao Cup. We have an FA Cup. His first season, we had the best finish by a new Premier League manager not named Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp. There were signs that this guy was going to be good. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. Last year was terrible. That can never happen again. But Ineos is in. They made a lot of good signings. There's a lot of promise for the future. They signed a lot of young players. It seems different, right? There's, they're not bringing in the Casemiros or the Ericsons. They're not bringing in the Overhill star. They're bringing in young guys we've never heard of, uh, like the, my man from Mali, the guy from Africa. Yeah, Kone. We, Kone, who we, he looks like he might be you know, pushing in the first team by the end of the season. They're bringing in Lenny Euro. They're changing things. I'm not saying. That's Ineos, though. It's Ineos. No, 100%. And I'm not saying you erased the last two years of Ten Hag. I think there was good. But, yeah, the bad from last year, it definitely outweighs a lot one, of the good. 1-1. One, 1-1. One, one. One, one. I think we got to give this team a little bit more time to gel. Look, talk to me in November. Things don't look good. So I'm coming back in November then, yeah? Yeah, no, come back. Hey, listen, we'll have a good time. Yeah, yeah. We'll go we will, we, will, we love sites. New York. You know you love New York. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, come back in November. We talk again. But let's see this team, a new team, new center back, uh, new uh, right back, you know, new midfielder came in in Ugarte. Look, Ten Hag, I admit, He's saying some wild stuff in press conferences. I get it. You know, he's got his back against the wall. He's fighting the media. I don't want him to fight all United fans. I get I get why people are upset. But I've seen some promise this season. I've seen them press well. I've seen them limit the shots on goal. You know, people give Onana a lot of stick. That third goal, I don't know what he was doing against Liverpool. But people don't talk about Onana set up that first goal against Brighton when he chipped the whole defense and hit Masraoui. I think there is... Uh, uh, it's there's tough. Fine details in what that's missing. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, and you know what? If things don't go right, the manager has to take the fall. He's been here three years. That's what's going to happen. But I think he could turn it around. I think you know we're going to win this weekend against Southampton, mm. and then we're going to. Everybody feeling yeah. confident. <laughs> Look, Southampton. I like the optimism. I need it, bro. I need no. the optimism. We need that in our life. Yeah. Things are so hard for United fan right now. The last couple years, false dawns, false starts. Yeah. All the Ali positivity, the right. Ronaldo positivity. I'm Ali revisionism, man. That's how bad it is. Yo, that's nuts. I liked Ali. He needed to go. But the, the story about him being a great manager, like, I don't know where people are pulling this from. But you know what? End of the day, I think we can do it. We can turn it around. We just we need a few results to go our way. Get the, you know, like, we need to get the media off our back. We need to get the fans a little bit more positive. Mm-hmm get a couple of results, and then I think it dies down a little bit. It, it calms, you know, as much as it does for United and for United manager, you know. He, he wins a testimonial, and he's still lost in the media, whatever. Mm, yeah, There's yeah. always going to be that. But we just need a couple of results to go our way, and then I think we'll be all right. But, you know, we'll see. Talk, talk to me in November. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ivan, come through listen, here. What are you saying, bro? I like How the you opt- feeling? I like, I like the optimism that he's given, but, listen, he's not going to change. Tang Hag is not going to change. One thing I hate about him is the fact that it's the favoritism, especially with um, Marcus Rashford. Rashford can play so poorly, like in the game, but he never gets subs off. Mm. But if, let's say, the other day, Ahmad, if he didn't, he, he didn't score that goal, Ahmad was going to come off. Fact. So it's like about the favoritism that he does as well, he's not going to change. That's the problem with Ten Hag. So me, I think he's going he's gone by um, Christmas. I don't see him changing. You don't see that the, the, the bad habits, the team gelling? No, I just said, no. don't see. He's just not going to change. We need a better proper coach that can you know have better tactics and set up set up us um and play better i just don't see Ten Hag doing that no you, you know i gotta give it to you guys you're watching the game like you'll be watching the game 7 30 right mm-hmm. and it's like you want to see a bit of entertainment that's right you want to see a start of play you want to see something that you can wake up to in the morning you wake up early but you see boring football like we want to wake up and see our team possession scoring goals attacking you know caught a lot of corners but we don't see that always counter attacking and defend defending no so I just don't see him saying, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just don't see him. Kevin, let's go to you, man. How you feeling, bro? I know you've been vocal. I've seen the calling shows and whatnot. Like, is it just like beginning of the end thing? Because I called it a few a few weeks ago, maybe last week. Beginning of the end. How, how do you see it, bro? Bro, it's been in the beginning of the end since last uh, last season. Let's be honest with each other. Like, uh, the question was if Eric Ten Hag can turn it around. The answer is no, he can't, because we're seeing the same mistakes that he's done last season. This is nothing new. 
Everyone's acting like the the favoritism is new. Everyone acting like the game management is new. Everyone acting like like the formation, the subs, everything, the even the head loss from from the press conferences. This is this has all been here since last season. The thing is, we were able to see that even with the structure, this guy is not going to be able to thrive because he's been given the tools, he's been given the money, he's been given the players, he's been given the tools to succeed. And for me, I look at things. I don't look at things as as hope or cope or copium, whatever you want to call it. I look at things as straight facts and evidence. Mm. I've seen a lot of people online calling uh, last year just because you won a trophy to keep this guy. But for me, what's the true measure of, of where you are as a team is the league, right? Is to win Premier Leagues and to win Champions League. Let's be honest. Are we any closer to winning a Premier League? Are we any closer to winning a Champions League? And first off, how do you even get in the Champions League? We're not even in it. We're not even in it. We got into the Europa League because we won a cup. Other than that, we would have been we would have not been in Europe in general at all. And to me, that's not acceptable. We have allowed, and and a main part of it is because of the Glazers. The Glazers have a lot to do with it, of course, because they have made this fan base and have allowed our standards to drop to the ground. But let's not forget, we're not Big Man United anymore. But but because of the Glazers. But I won't forget that. And I know you won't forget no, that. No. And it's like, I know uh, fans in, in the UK and fans like you who go to the games and spend money on the games, but people from all over the world, from Asia, from the US, from Australia, we wake up at a certain times. We we take times out of our, our, our family. Bro, out that was of our, our beetle. Bro, That's this New York for you there, right there. Yo, you know surprise! I mean? I'm su I'm surprised it wasn't a rat, bro. Yeah, surprising one of those. If that's uh, a rat, then I'm getting out of it. <laughs> those trash pandas. But uh, but anyway, um, for, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I want to be able to to sacrifice the time from whatever it is that you're doing and see good football. Is that so much to ask for? I, I'm tired of this like negative goal difference. I'm tired of going into games Facts. and not being able to be like, yes, we're going to smash this team. We're going to cook this team. We haven't won three games in a row in how long? And 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 that Bro, and that goes crazy. that that tells you everything you need to say about this club. Like we, none of us are confident to be like, yeah, Everton Hawk can turn around. It's a hope, and and I, I'm basing this on facts and evidence that we have seen. So everyone who called us toxic, all the fans who have called us toxic last year, saying you guys are toxic fans, you Americans don't know ball, you 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 guys stick to soccer, all these things. Where are you now? The, all the people who wrote the letter to Ineos, where are you now? Are who's the toxic one now? You. All you guys are talking about. Uh, uh, oh, Eric Ten Hag needs more time under a new structure. You got the new structure. Where where are you now? To be to be honest, if you really want to give this manager four or five years, then you shouldn't be a United fan. And that's my mm. honest opinion mm. because United should be up there challenging for Premier Leagues and Champions League. We're that's nowhere right. near that. Mm. Nowhere near that. And I don't understand how someone could be here and accept that. This is unacceptable as a United fan. And I, I big up everyone who's Eric Ten Hag in and everything. This is just my Your opinion, opinion yeah, as yeah. a fan. You get me? Everyone has their own way. Everyone has their own uh, knowledge and, and, and their own way to think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You support your, your team. You support your team however you want to support it. If you want to back the manager and all these things. And the fact that he's lost, the Old Trafford crowd, the, 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 the True Reds and all these guys, that's already damning. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is already like he's on more pressure than he's ever been. But for me, I'm on Ineos' watch. And... Ineos have done a lot of good things, I'm not going to lie, uh, in recruitment. And obviously it's going to take time, so I don't want to be too much on them. But the one most important thing that you need is the manager. If you don't, if they, they can do everything they want on the recruitment, but if you don't have the manager to get the best out of the players, then you're done. Mm. So that's the most important thing, and the fact that they chose the, to keep this manager, whether it was for financial reasons or because they couldn't find anyone else, whatever it is. This guy needs to be gone, and if this guy is still here, we won't go anywhere. And that's no. the truth. And that's yeah. the truth. So there is no turning around for Eric Ten Hag. So yeah. that's my I opinion. Say I gotta say something. Yeah. You know, there is no bigging up who are Ten Hag in. You know, and the only thing I'm giving Ten Hag is, hey Gunny, you 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 getting this right? My middle finger, bro. <laughs> Fuck tonight. I'm out <laughs> here. Yeah. Griggs, come in. Um, let me ask you about um, Ogate because obviously he's meant to be the one that maybe can transform us, etc., etc. But Chance, okay, right? is it just one of them where it's more than Ogate? Listen, Casemiro has his faults, etc., etc. But is it just as simple as Ogate coming in and then it all changes? Like, what's missing for you in his team, like, for him to like succeed? 
I don't think you could bring in Sergio Busquets to the team. It's not fixing anything in the midfield. I never, honestly, I've never seen a coach, especially someone that's Dutch. So you expect total football from them, right? The Johan Cruyffism and all that kind of stuff. He ignores his midfield. So whether it's prime Sergio Busquets, whether it's Ugarte now, I told you United fans, I you sure me says, I said Ugarte hype from the beginning. I don't rate him as a player, and I also don't think he's the right guy to fix it. Is he decent? Yes. Can I know United fans have been gassing up the confidence. Wait, we got some everything, man. Yeah, Let's yeah, be yeah. honest, man. <laughs> yesterday, we got some everything, right? Yesterday, he made this one nice little long pass to the winger. Yeah, Everyone yeah, got yeah. gassed. First of all, the guy, he's six foot. He looks like he's five foot ten. He has short legs. <laughs> the little Sandroism, as I like to call it now. Um, mm. I don't think Ugarte is the answer. I think, is he better than Casemiro right now? Can you offer more than Casemiro? Yes. You can offer more than Casemiro. I can offer more than Casemiro. Everyone here can offer more than Casemiro. It's not a difficult mm. concept. But... It's just not going to be enough. I worry about Kobe Mano as well. Uh, someone mentioned it. As, as, contrary, contrary to what Neji says, that Kobe Mano should be having 10-plus interceptions in a game, no, Kobe Mano has been having doing graveyard shifts for Eric Ten Hag. And we saw him on Saturday against, I think they played Ireland, right? And for England, he had amazing set. He had, he had about 85 touches in the game, right? Kobe Mano averages about 50 for United. Yesterday, Angel Gomez, Carrington product, had 150 touches. Can you let me know last time a United midfielder had 150 touches in the game? It takes him about four games to do that. That's how long it takes. So the midfield, as long as Eric Ten Hag keeps ignoring it, it won't prosper to anything. Ugarte can come in. Ugarte made new Bruno midfield. That don't win you shit at the end of the day. It's not going to do anything. So the only answer is he goes back to what we saw in preseason, a 3-2-5, build up with two people in the pivot and no longer 3-1-6. Sai knows about me about this. I hate the 3-1-6. I don't know what area code it is. Apparently it's in Kansas. So F Kansas too. I don't like to do anything with the 316. It's the terrible, terrible concept. Shout out Kansas. Shout out Kansas. <laughs> Shout out Patrick Mahomes. But yeah. I hate the 316. And as long as he persists with it, I don't care who you put in that one, whether it's Casemiro, I said Busquets, Rodri, Makalele, whoever you want to put in there. It's not going to work. So until he fixes that, it's going to be up and down. Yeah, we're going to get some wins. We'll probably win against Southampton, right? But who, uh, I don't know, but yeah, I can't lie. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? You know, low key early kickoff, the script is in there. But, yeah, but apparently, that we've never ever lost in the last how many games? Is there 15, some stuff? Oh, 15. Oh. Yeah. 15. Welcome, Eric Ten Hag. There you go. <laughs> we've seen plenty of records get broken. Staff, you know, Staff has an intro. There's a yeah, whole, whole, it's a whole, whole thesis intro, of it. So. You know what they say, records are there to be broken, right? Yeah, there you go. Let me ask you a question. The attack, does that worry you? Yes. Yes, it does. So I, I like the players we have. I like the signings we've made. You know, we'll see what we look like when, uh, when Hoyland comes back. I think he's going to add a different dimension compared to what Xerxes adds. I like how Xerxes can drop deep. He can link play. He got that goal against Fulham. He showed he can get in the box. I think he's a very talented player. He's a former wonder kid, came through at uh, Bayern Munich. I think he's a really big talent. But we got to see this attack gel. I, I agree. Not to, not to go backwards, you know, but the defense is okay. could be better. The midfield definitely needs work. I think the attack is actually what scares me the most. Rashford had a decent preseason. He looked like he was up for it. He was sharp. Even during the season, he's been running more. He looks like he's more engaged defensively. But that's not good enough for United, right? Like, Anthony, one of the best wingers in the world, pressing, winning the ball back. I don't care. Like, go, go, go get an assist. Go score some goals. Like, I'm, he's a useful player, but he's not good enough for United. We need that guy who's going to take control, and he's going to be that threat. You know, Rashford was the threat two years ago. He admitted madness. He had 30 goals, you know, 11 so Where do you assists. think the goals are coming from then? Where do you see that? Because now we're on what? N minus two? Minus three? Minus three. Minus three. Minus three. So, so like, I, I, there's a challenge right on Twitter that I've seen is that, yeah. where do my United get into the plus? <laughs> now, I mean, let's be honest. Where do my United get to the plus? I, I know nobody wants to hear it, but if you look at the underlying numbers, you know, mm. our, our big chances created... Mm. We're, we're decent, right? Like XG we, hype, XG hype. They said XG hype. hype. Look, with the hype thing, yeah. look, look, if you don't finish, like Xerxes had two good chances. Mm -hmm. Look, you could say Liverpool, they, they, they kind of sat back yeah, a little yeah, yeah, bit. Yeah. It wasn't in the heat of the game, but he still had two good chances. If that Gar if, if Xerxes stays on the ground, Garnacho scores that final goal, and we go up 2-1 against Brighton, maybe it's a different game. Mm -hmm. I think it's something, and, and again, this is not an excuse. No, no. It's Man United. It's the cost, biggest club in cost, the world. Cost. You got to perform. But I think there's a world where these guys, you know, those goals go in, the confidence comes back. Things get a little bit better. And again, ultimately, this is going to fall on the manager. But if we're creating big chances, you know, Liverpool had three shots on target. We had three shots on target. They had three goals. We had none, right? 
they, they played better, but, you know, Casemiro had a brain fart, gave the ball away by himself. You could talk about the 3-1-6. I don't know what formation you have to play to not kick it to the other team when your player's not paying attention, but, you know, that needs to be on the player's shoulders. But at the end of the day, I think to, to, to win, this team needs to find goals from somewhere. And whether that's, you know, playing Ahmad and playing through Ahmad or, you know, getting Hoyle in back and Hoyle, this is New York for you, you know? Yeah, New York. You always get a little loud. Everybody's working. City never sleeps. So, you know, if it's, if it's Hoyland coming back, being physical, taking that next step, you know, the, the team is creating chances. We just need to get a little bit more clinical, a little bit more confidence. And I think we can we can be in and around it. But you're right. I don't think we have that out-and-out out threat like a, a Salah or a Erling Holland or anybody like that. No guarantee goal scorers, isn't it? No, there isn't. Unless, unless Hoyland comes back and, and – you know, takes that next step. And, you know, he, he had a run of form. He broke something. I think he broke Rude's record for most consecutive goals, consecutive goals. games yeah, yeah. with a goal. Yeah. So maybe he comes back and he can he could do something. But, again, I, I got to be honest, I'm a little worried where the goals are going to come from. In terms of the position, has anything changed for you expectation-wise this season? Because I can't lie, man. I demanded third this season, but, boy, I have to take that L, yeah, man. I got cooked yeah, for it as well. I don't know, man. I can't lie to you. What are you saying, bro? I, I'm saying we're gonna finish six. We are not gonna finish in the top four, bro. I don't. I just don't see. No. It. Unless we change the manager, let's say by Christmas, then I might have some hope going forward in, in, into the next year. But mm. right now, I'll say we finish six. Yeah, I don't see us in the top six. four. Yeah, I don't see it. Honestly. That's crazy, man. You know, for me, it's one of them where it's this manager, cup manager, like. Yeah, he's more of a cup money, cup manager. You know. That's one thing I give him credit for. He takes the cup serious. And, mm -hmm. and if a manager does that, I actually, you know, give him the accommodations for it. Like, that's one thing I like about him because mm -hmm. you need to win trophies as a team. United, it's all about trophies. Mm -hmm. But we got to focus on the league, too, and where we finish. Mm -hmm. And we got to um, challenge for the league. That's mm -hmm. where we want to, you know, aim at. So, yes, you're winning the trophies on the, in the cups, but we got to see better on the field and, you know, also in the league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kevin, come, come through. Um, I mean, it's going to be difficult balancing it three games a week. You know, it's like, how can this team kind of like coerce together in terms of just kind of coexist, like in terms of gelling together? Because we've got three games a week. Is he going to get the balance right? Is he going to get, you know, the, the, the selection right? Is he going to be a bit more, you know, adaptable to different situations? Like, do you think the stubbornness is going to get to him? Where, where, where do you see like the, the kind of the hectic schedule? Because it's a big, big, like, you know, this, these next three weeks are massive, man. Yeah. And we've seen we've seen before that he doesn't rotate at all. That's the that's the issue. Like you you what's the whole point of having the squad if you're not gonna rotate? We've seen the only reason why we won those cups is because we didn't rotate at all. We started players in in the in the prem, the same players we started in the cups, and that's the only reason why we won it. But what's the whole point if you're gonna have a squad, right? So I don't think he's gonna learn from that. I think that he's gonna do the same thing and a lot of people want to say that injuries aren't his fault, and I get it because sometimes like players get injured. But why why are people getting injured during during training? Why are people getting injured uh, uh, when when they're not on the field? It's because it's because the manager keeps picking them and he doesn't rotate, and we've seen that. You know, last year we've seen it all the time. Ahmad was ready to go for games and games and games, and didn't and, and, and didn't put him on. I went to the the Fulham game in OT, and he started forcing. Why are you starting forcing when Ahmad is way better than this guy? Like, like, and, and it's and it's like, why are you leaving this forcing guy out to dry? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I remember thinking, like, he didn't deserve that. He didn't deserve that at all. Why don't you start Ahmed? This guy doesn't like rotating. He picks favorites, and I just don't see him changing that at all. So uh, it's peace, what's the man. best front three guys like in terms of front three? Like, what would you say, Chris? Best front three. Uh, I still go Rashford, Xerxes, Ahmed. You? I think um, I don't know about Rashford. I'll put Garnacho, Xerxes, Ahmed. Garnacho, Zerski, Ahmad. Best Rashford, Zerski, Ahmad. Uh, Sancho, Ahmad, and Zerski. Oh, I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> we Sancho. sold Sancho. Sancho to London. Exactly. That tells you everything. We got nothing in our attack. But what? We got Garnacho, Rashford, and who else? You guys just said? Zerski? Anthony, Zerski, Hoyland. Oh my God, you talking about Anthony? You reminded me. He's there. He's there. Yeah, I don't even knew Anthony was there. What are we doing with our attack, bro? Like, we got nothing. I think our attack is the leastest one in the whole 20 in the Premier League. Negative goal difference, bro. Exactly. We don't Negative score goal goals. difference. We don't score goals. We forgot, like, our goal difference. Like, I don't even think we scored more than 50 goals past 
two seasons. Saeed, how many, how, how many did you say, Saeed? 75, 80 goals? How many? 70, 70. What do you reckon? It's peak, bro. 50. Yeah, maybe all comps. Maybe all comps will hit that. Uh, all comps, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. And listen, listen. We, we sold our best attacker to Chelsea. No, we didn't. In your opinion, we didn't, but you're going to watch. Sancho's playing FIFA right now. You, oh. oh, man. Hey, hey, listen to me. Let me. I need the mic now. The Sancho hit. You know, you guys not watching football, bro. You guys watching who ball. You guys want that Bruno who ball, right? Oof. Over the top. Bang. Bro, it's not 1880 or 1910. It's 2024. We need technicians in our field, bro. I want ball Who's to your feet. technicians? And uh, we had Sancho, but we don't no, anymore. No, now, now. Uh, now, okay, now, uh, hold Anyone? on. Anyone? I'm, I'm at, Yeah, Kobe Maynard. Kobe, 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 Kobe I'm at. Are you, are you guys worried about Kobe Maynard? Yes. You know, a little bit. Yes, I am worried because as long as, uh, I feel like as long as uh, this manager is there, he won't get the best. He will play him, he'll, he'll, he won't profile him well, and he'll play him in the wrong positions and, and uh, the wrong combinations in the midfield. And, and you saw it against Liverpool. He got exposed. And... And, and unfortunately, this guy is not thriving under, you know, uh, under the system. So, yeah, he's not going to thrive at all. And I'm worried for this guy. As long as his manager's here, I'm worried for, for my boy, Kobe. What about you, bro? I think Kobe's doing all right. I'm, I am worried for him a little bit just because the workload. Mm. We don't have a deep midfield. You know, hopefully Collier can give us something. Kobe can get some rest every now and then. Um, honestly, he's, he's putting up good numbers defensively. Like, he's doing well in the duels. You know, the ball recoveries. I don't think that's his best role, though. And, you know, I love Bruno. Bruno's my captain. But I almost, and again, this is against my, you know, brand. But, like, I almost feel like we need, uh, like, Kobe needs to be further forward. And we need the eight to link from the six to Kobe. Um, I think long term, that's his best position. I think he could do the role. I think he could do kind of like, you know, nobody wants to hear this name, the Frankie de Jong role you know, where he comes deep, takes the ball off the defense, and then gets forward. But he's played a lot of games. You know, he was injured last year. He came back, and we've relied on this kid. And he's just 19. He went to England. I wanted him to get the summer off. He played almost every game. You know, I want to see Ten Hag rotate. He rotated in his first season. He went to mm. Ammonia and, you know, clean and fresh and tied FC. We were playing in the Europa League. And, you know, he was playing guys. He was playing Malasia. He was bringing guys off the bench. You know, Sancho and Malasia stinking it up, you know, away in the Europa League, getting hooked at halftime. But, you know, last year, you're right, he, he did. He played everyone every game because those are the guys he could rely on. You know, I'm hoping this year he's got a little bit more of a squad. He could play more players. You know, he could rotate in. He, he's, he's rotated the wingers a little bit. People mm -hmm. want to argue, you know, with the way he did it, left Rashford on. Rotate because maybe they're just not firing. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah. And nobody's grabbing the position. Like, you know, Garnacho came on and he was great as a sub. But then after he was, you know, he started last game, he wasn't better than Rashford. You know, Ahmad wasn't better than Rashford in the first half of Brighton. But then he turned it on the second half. So, you know, when these guys kind of come in and, and, you know, they start firing, they start playing well together, hopefully, hopefully we get everything clicking. But, you know, we, we need to protect Kobe Manu at all costs because yeah. this gives the future yeah, of the club. Yeah, one, one second. We're going to bring in uh, guys that's come through. What's your name, brother? Mikey. Mikey. United fan? Uh, no, Milan. Milan. Okay. What, what do you think the United's problem is? Uh, problem is just, uh, I think, the Glazers, really. If you th think about it like this, you bring in all this talent, Hoyland, Fernandez, Mainu, Garnacho. If they can't perform, it has to be up to the coach, right? But then you realize... The coach can't even be at fault either because you're giving him all these pieces and then there's no cohesion. You spend $100 million on Anthony, who played well under Ten Hag at Ajax, and then... Eh. That just shows you maybe Ten Hag's a problem then. I don't really think it's Ten Hag, though, because if it if it's really him, then... Oh Fucking kill me right now, bro. <laughs> kill me. Hey, you got a rope. Tie me right now, bro. I want to fuck hey, you guys. Listen, we don't, we don't want you to do that. We don't want you to do that. But listen, but listen we're going to wrap it up here. Guys, we're in New York. Shout out to everyone in New York for, for pulling up and uh, giving us hospitality. You know what I'm saying to you? But listen, man, Ten Hag, it's big, big games coming up. Can he survive, people? Let me know in the comments. Southampton next. Are we winning? Nope. No.
United, United. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not fucking winning. Yeah, no, we're winning. No we're winning this weekend. No, no we're winning. The Milan fans confident. No so. The Milan's co confident. Uh, uh, they need to. They need to. They need to worry about their season. Milan, Milan. Milan need to confident about their season, you know what I mean? Because Milan are not firing. But listen, people, it's all kicking off. Sayu TV on tour, New York. We are out, people. Take care, man. We're outside. Let's go, let's go, let's go.